Hello! Today's topic is progressive archiving. In this video, we'll go over what progressive archiving is and how it can be beneficial to archiving for language documentation. In traditional archiving, collections are deposited in their final form. With the progressive archiving model, the working depositor adds materials to an archive as soon as possible after they are collected. Typically, the raw data collected in the field goes into the archive first, and the additional media files, such as transcriptions or translations of that raw data, can be added later. Progressive archiving requires the depositor to do the following. Select. Select the data that you know you want to preserve from the beginning of a project. Do not select data that you know should not be accessed, such as sensitive or confidential materials. Organize. Organize and arrange your data in a way that makes sense for you and your archive. Give your data a meaningful structure through file naming. Document. Keep good metadata to document the content of your files. Document the relationships between your files so you know which items go together. Keep track of which files have or have not yet been sent to the archive. And if your archive provides a former sheet to keep track of metadata, use it. Here are some other things to consider when progressive archiving. If you end up having different versions of the same files in the archive, users need to know which version is which. Some archives allow innate versioning, where later versions of the same media file are added to the same item record with some documentation of the version history. However, not all archives allow innate versioning. In this case, you need to indicate additional versions by adding a V for version and a version number, beginning with the leading zero, to the end of the file name. Deletion. You may not be able to delete an item once it's already in an archive. It's vital to check your materials for issues like sensitivity before you deposit them. If you cannot delete a sensitive item or need time to determine its sensitivity, many archives will allow you to restrict access to authorized users only or for a predetermined amount of time. This model requires the depositor to think about archiving more frequently, and with that, there are many benefits. Less stress. If you start the archival process from the beginning of a project, you won't have to untangle large amounts of data and re-establish relationships between the different materials that you have collected. More interaction. Progressive archiving supports more interaction between the depositor, archive staff, and potentially the end users. The depositor and the archive work together over time to contribute to a more accessible and comprehensive record of the work. Better documentation. By providing useful metadata to your own data soon after collection, it's easier to provide details that will aid in the discoverability of that data. Those who find your data will be able to better understand the context of its collection. Discoverability and contextuality both add value to your materials. To review, Progressive archiving lets you add materials over time from the beginning of a project. Select, organize, and document early on for less stress, more interaction, and better documentation. This allows the person who knows the collection best to add archival value to their own materials. For more videos like this one, check out Isla's channel.